What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the to the recap, kind of. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. did watch basketball today, but nothing is, like, really interesting to talk about. I mean, we're players or teams are still trying to make playoff pushes. Yes, there's some implications for the Pacers, the Celtics, um, the Raps, and the Bulls all losing today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it was just like, it was just a basketball. Devin Booker scored 45. Good game. Um, I kind of want to talk about things outside of today's slate of games. So if you're specifically here to hear me talk about your favorite team's game today, I'm sorry. That's just not happening in today's video again. And this has always been a place where we just talk basketball when I want to. wasn't always just, hey, this is what happened today. Um, so let, let's talk about some things because I, I'm a little bit late to the party. I feel like every NBA YouTuber out there has already made a video or talked about the Brooklyn Nets getting LaMarcus Aldridge, getting Blake Griffin, and, and just continue to pile on these names uh, for their for their championship push. So I think I want to title today's video, um, Is There Parody Still in the NBA? Or something along those lines. I just had a long trip from Indianapolis to Chicago where we drove it three hours. And these are the type of things that was on my mind because I was trying to answer my own question. Is there parity in the NBA? Because we've went through these stretches in recent NBA history where there wasn't really, right? We knew in the Eastern Conference if LeBron James was on any team, we knew that that team was probably going to the finals. And he did that for, what, eight straight seasons? Like every single year, we knew it was going to be LeBron versus blank. And then we had this period of time with the Warriors, especially after the Kevin Durant thing, that we knew that the Warriors were going to dominate the league. And as long as they were healthy, they were going to get a championship. So parity wasn't really real there. It was still fun. As an NBA fan, I can say I still love watching LeBron James dominate the Eastern Conference. I still enjoyed watching playoff games even though at the end of the day, I know that KD, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green was just way too much for any team to handle in a seven-game series. And then KD left. And then K KD gets injured in the finals. course, he leaves. He goes to Brooklyn to team up with Kyrie Irving. Right? And this time, last season, we believed that there was parity in the NBA. It seemed like a lot of teams had big twos. You had Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. You had AD LeBron. You had uh, Kevin Durant and, and Kyrie Irving eventually. Eventually, it seems like there are a lot of teams with like two stars instead of big threes, instead of super teams. And, and unfortunately for us, the season got cut short. I think that a lot of us had the Lakers as probably the favorite to win last year's championship when it was halted. But nobody was like, we know for sure the Lakers are the best team in L.A. You know what I'm saying? You can have all of the you can have all of the opinions you wanted, but there is still a conversation on which team in L.A. was the best team in L.A. until until the Clippers fell, right? So there was parity in the NBA. We watched every single game in that bubble, every single game in that playoff bubble, not really knowing. We saw people picking the Clippers to win a championship even after the bubble. People were really afraid of the of the, of the Lakers because if you remember in those regular season games in the bubble, the Lakers could not shoot the ball whatsoever. And people were like, oh, snap. I specifically remember some of the talking heads on TV talking about, um, are the Lakers going to get out of the first round because Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers are on fire and, and nobody's sitting a shot on the Lakers. So, again, the Lakers getting that championship wasn't a guarantee, right? And then now we go into this season, and I would argue that, like, if you watched my video from a few months ago before the season started, I made an argument that when we were talking about pure talent and parity, this season was going to be amazing because now we got Katie and Kyrie. We still have all these dynamic duos across the league, and there was a chance that, that we were going to see a playoff or championship matchup that nobody expected, right? Then the James Harden trade happens. And now we're like, oh, parity is starting to starting to fade away. And then Blake Griffin signs in the buyout market. And now LaMarcus Aldridge signs in the buyout market. So we, we try to answer this question, does parity still exist in the NBA or are the Brooklyn Nets that good? I'm going to be the bear of bad news to y'all. LaMarcus Aldridge signing to the Brooklyn Nets probably doesn't matter as much as you want it to, to, to matter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge is very far from a very good NBA player anymore. Sure, he can, he's going to provide some some offensive firepower. And I think in his, pers, uh, his press conference, he was like, I'm going to provide defensive versatility. And I'm like, when have you ever done that? Why, why at 36 are we saying that's what we're doing? You know what I'm saying? So, yes, he probably will have some playoff moments here and there. But his, his signing to the Brooklyn Nets ain't that big of a deal just because he doesn't really raise the ceiling too much. You know what I'm saying? Like him going to the Miami Heat significantly helps the Miami Heat more than him going to the Brooklyn Nets. Does that make sense? So, yes, um, it is weird to see see things like that happen, but it just didn't really improve the team as much as people wanted it to, you know? 
And of course, some of the smaller market teams were upset and they're, and they're trying to figure out a way to change the buyout market because at the end of the day, when we see players get bought out, uh, players of LaMarcus's caliber, of Blake Griffin's caliber, um, they're typically going to go to the best teams in the league, right? You don't see somebody going to the buyout market and signing with the, the Charlotte Hornets who've been really good recently, but they don't go there because these are players, and this is going to transition to my, my second topic here, who want to win championships, Blake Griffin has never won a championship, and I remember before he signed with the Brooklyn Nets, we talked about it on this channel as well, of Blake Griffin being in that channel of players that is so good but probably might not be a Hall of Famer at the end of the day unless he plays a big-time role on a championship-quality team. He gets bought out. He goes to a championship-quality team. And if they win a championship and he has big-time moments, he'll probably be a Hall of Famer. LaMarcus Aldridge, another player that has been significant in the past 10, 10 15 years of him being in the NBA. He gets a championship under his belt. Lock him into the Hall of Fame. And then we get to something else that happened in NBA in the NBA world, and that was Russell Westbrook going off for 34, 20, and 15. Something like that, a crazy stat line where Bradley Beal was out with an injury. They went against the Pacers, and, and, and Russell Westbrook looked incredible. Stephen A. Smith comes to a show. Good game, Russell Westbrook, but none of that matters because you don't have a championship. But these are the same people. Um, the TV, the talking heads, the NBA Twitter, they get mad when LaMarcus and Blake Griffin and all of these players team up to get that championship, but will talk bad on a guy, Russell Westbrook, for not having that. He didn't take the shortcut. And you know what? I'm, I'm not saying that these players, Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge, shouldn't take the shortcut because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter to me whether you have a ring on your resume or you don't. But you can't, there's like this, this double standard or like, what, it, what do you expect? Now, if Russell Westbrook was to go to a team, he was like, you know what, I'm requesting a trade to Brooklyn now. Does his games matter more if he gets a championship with Brooklyn, Stephen A.? You know what I'm saying? Can we not enjoy historic nights on players that don't have championships? If Chris Paul had a 28-assist game, is Stephen A. Smith going to go on to TV and say, good game, CP? But remember that time you were in the conference finals and you didn't pull it out? Why can't we just enjoy basketball? And this is not a shot at Stephen A. Smith because I, I am a fan of Stephen A. Smith. I think he's one of the most entertaining people on sports TV, 100%. Um, he does have some crazy takes, but if you look at him as entertainment, it can be fun, right? But it's not just him. It's NBA Twitter. Every time one of these players that doesn't end up with a championship um, have an amazing game, gets a little bit of feedback, a positive feedback in the world, people are like, but, but what about that game six? where they had the lead against the Warriors and they choked it away. Russell Westbrook dribbled off his own leg and then Steph Curry hit a three. Bro, it was seven years ago. Get over it. Like, why can't we just enjoy the players, bro? Russell Westbrook is not going to be in this league for, for 10 more years being great. We, you go regret you not being impressed by the 34, 20, and, and 15 game. I feel like I've been rambling, and that's that's basically what this channel has been the entire existence, right? Um, but yeah, but there, of course there is value in championships. I'm not saying that that a player shouldn't shouldn't go out and get championships, but at the end of the day, it it shouldn't make or break whether you enjoy a performance. You know what I'm saying? Because that Russell, if you did, I didn't watch that Russell Westbrook game live. I was at, I was in Indianapolis at the March Madness Houston versus um, Oregon State game. And I just saw on Twitter that he had 20 assists with seven minutes left. And I tweeted, Russell Westbrook did what? And what did I do? I went back to rewatch that game, and I realized how incredible of a game it was. But nah, he ain't got no championships. So this random regular season game, don't it, it's just not impressive. It's just a, it's just a weird way to, to think about the game of basketball. Because I honestly believe if you think that way, you're not enjoying basketball for what it is. You just aren't. You just aren't. You can have the best performance. Devin Booker, Devin Booker just scored 45 against my favorite team tonight, dominating us. We had no answer. Imagine watching that game, but like, well, he still ain't got a playoff appearance yet, so who cares about the, you know, right? Isn't that just stupid? Isn't it just stupid? So getting back to, to the original topic, talking about parity, talking about things like this, this also goes to Kevin Durant. Uh, these are the three things that were on my mind in NBA Twitter over the last couple of days. I even tweeted NBA Twitter has been weird, and people thought I was talking about something completely different. I don't know what's really going on. When I talk about NBA Twitter, I'm talking about like on the, the highest level because uh, Kevin Durant was in the news a few times this week about some things. Um, and, and for everything that Kevin Durant does, talking to people on Twitter, um, 
at the end of the day, Kevin Durant does care, but he doesn't care at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course it means something to him that some people go out there and talk bad about his name, as, as it should, across all platforms. I mean, yes, you're, you're one of the best of all time, so you probably shouldn't care about some random people on Twitter, but he does. But one thing he doesn't care enough about is your opinion to stop his team from being great. If Kevin Durant told the people at the Brooklyn Nets, nah, I don't really think we need the, the James Harden trade. You trying to tell me that they wouldn't have, you know what I'm saying? Kevin Durant was like, yeah, bring James in. Oh, yeah, bring Blake in. Yes, bring LaMarcus in. Bring everybody in because I want to win more championships. And if you're one of those people that believe that Kevin Durant didn't have a say in the James Harden trade, he didn't have a say in Blake Griffin signing, you are crazy. The Bulls called Zach Levine up. They had meetings for weeks about Vucevic. So you're trying to tell me the top three player in the league right now don't have any say of his team's movements? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. So he cares enough to maybe reply on Twitter, but he doesn't care enough to prevent him from still playing on his stack team. You get what I'm saying? It's just so crazy. Kevin Durant's one of those interesting dudes I would love to just talk to uh, one day. Um, is it, but but I want to ask you guys a question about parity. Do you think it exists or the Brooklyn that's just that talented that we know that they're coming out of the East? And we know that they will win a championship as long as they are healthy. Because even today, right, today, they, I forget, um, they, they, so today they have a game. And through this game, they were they were struggling for a bit. They were going to get some use to Rockets, you know, who you know, went on a 20-game losing streak, had a couple wins here and there, got some younger pieces. Um, the Houston Rockets had the, had the game for majority of it. And even, even James Harden goes down with an injury again. Like, James Harden, Kevin Durant not there. But Kyrie is. And Kyrie got these boys a victory. Each end of they can take turns. Kevin Durant can play every third game. James Harden can play every third game. Kyrie Irving can play every third game until the playoffs where they can all come together. And they'd win, they win the they probably win the championship. You know what I'm saying? And if you believe that parity does not exist in the league right now, how much does it matter to you? Because if I am of the opinion that that parity doesn't matter, I'm still watching basketball every single day. You know what I'm saying? And I, I was talking to an old head. I know that has negative connotation, but I promise you I mean it in the most sincere way. When I say old head, I mean a guy that was around watching prime Michael Jordan. And um, and we were talking because he doesn't watch basketball anymore. He doesn't watch the NBA anymore. He transitioned to be a college basketball fan. Um, and, and he was basically saying the, the lack of loyalty is the reason why he doesn't enjoy NBA basketball anymore. And you know what? I completely understand if, that, if that's the biggest thing on his – plate of reasons to watch basketball is loyalty to an organization I understand you sticking to college at the end of the day but for me for me I think loyalty matters to a certain extent right I can't I can't imagine a player being loyal to an organization that hasn't put them in the right position to reach that ultimate goal Damian Lillard is about as loyal as loyal as it gets. And the Portland Trailblazers are trying to do everything to get him that championship. At the end of the day, he might be one of those players to never have a championship, ever. That doesn't make him any less of an individual player. That doesn't mean he's not a winner just because he doesn't win the ultimate thing. Chris Paul is one of the, one of the biggest winners in the history of basketball. Numbers prove it, but he don't have a championship. He don't have a championship, but he's a winner. Damian Lillard is a winner. You can't tell me Damian Lillard's not a winner. Let me go to these standings really quick. Think about everything the Portland Trailblazers have gone through this season. They are the sixth seed right now. They are 11 games over 500. 11 games over 500, bro. <laughs> In the Eastern Conference, bro, we a lot of teams are struggling to hit that 500 mark, and they are 11 games over. And that's missing CJ. That's missing Nurkic. That's missing this player and that player. He's a winner. But if you don't win a championship, in some eyes, he may not be. I don't know what this video turned into. We don't talk about anything um, current, but those are just things that are on my mind at the moment. Let me know what you think. And uh, that's all I really got. See you later. Call game.